Hello guys and welcome back to another video by myself, DE101 Productions. Today I am going to be doing something I never thought I would be doing, and that is an episode review of series 11. Uh dear. TV, I'm going to take the opportunity to review the entirety of series 11 because I've never taken the chance to review a Doctor Who series while it's been on television so I might as well start now in one of Doctor Who's most critical eras. The Revival. Now originally I didn't want to do it because I thought nah I've never reviewed an episode before I'm only kind of really I've never really reviewed anything before I've done a couple of figure reviews on my channel but kind of like I generally just stick to um, stories and, well, I'm going to stick to <laughs> stories and animations and figure reviews and all that kind of stuff because they're quite easy to do and quite um, simple, really. But to do an episode review, I was kind of always a bit about it. But I've decided to kind of take on the challenge of doing um, a... There's a bug flying in my room. <laughs> I've decided to take on the challenge of reviewing the entirety of series 11 and see if I can do it and if I can fantastic and I will continue doing episode reviews long into 2019. So in the past couple of years I felt that the writing and the stories has just gone kind of gone downhill. Series 10 kind of picked it back up a little bit so I'm hoping that series 11 will kind of raise the bar a little bit more. So um, I'm going to dive right in and I'm going to concentrate on the good first then the bad, and hopefully kind of as these reviews progress, I'll become a little bit faster, and a little bit slicker, and a little bit more kind of streamlined getting into it. So, starting off with the good, I've only got a few points on this. For me, a first episode of a brand new series, of a brand new Doctor, is the most important. It has to grasp you straight away. You need to kind of have that thing of, oh, I'm intrigued to see where the Doctor's going next, or I'm intrigued to see where the story's going next, or I'm intrigued to see what happens next in the story arc, when they had a story arc. But Series 11 doesn't seem to have one, or doesn't have one, according to Chris Chibnall. But he could be lying. So there are some good points of the story. And unfortunately, <laughs> they're not kind of major good points, at least not cons compared to everything else. So the very first kind of good point is the music. The music by the brand new composer is fantastic. At least for the first episode. I'll, I'll give him a better kind of adjustment a bit further down the line by the time we get to end the series 11. But comparing the first episode of uh, Jodie Whittaker to the last episode of Peter Capaldi, which was Twice Upon a Time, you can see a difference in the music. And uh, Jodie Whittaker's story, The Woman Who Fell to Earth, has a lot more atmospheric and kind of eerie and kind of in the background sort of music, which is really nice to see. The second thing that I enjoyed about the story was Bradley Walsh, because in one episode he's had, actually had quite a... not a, a massive kind of turnaround of character, but he's kind of had that little blip. They made you go, ooh, okay, maybe there's, there's going to be something more to this character. He starts off as a character who's very kind of inside of himself, he's not a very expressive person, he kind of likes to keep himself to himself and him and his wife and all that kind of stuff, and he, he makes an effort with Ryan, but he's still kind of always, is worried that Ryan's judging him. And then by the end of the episode, he kind of comes out a little bit more and explains about his history and who he is and all that kind of stuff. In the case of Bradley Walsh, the, there was a little bit of kind of character acceleration. There was a little bit kind of of progress in him as a character, and I really liked that. And Bradley Walsh played uh, played him absolutely fantastically. So that was another good point of mine. The third good point was the fact that there's no TARDIS. And while that may seem like a weird point, the Doctor's always kind of regenerated and had his TARDIS, or her TARDIS, even 
even in kind of 11th hour, although the TARDIS was kind of rebuilding, regenerating, all that kind of stuff, he still had it. The Doctor still had the TARDIS, so it was kind of still there. It was kind of that piece of home that he could be like, yes, it's okay, it's good. But with Jodie Whittaker, she doesn't have that. It's kind of that, ooh, well, what am I going to do? I've lost it. And the fact that it's not on Earth, the TARDIS isn't on Earth either, it's on, it's somewhere else. That's also really, really nice to see. So, that was another good point. The fact that they've kind of done a little bit of the unknown and gone, no TARDIS, let's see what we can do. And it's been, no TARDIS has been done before, but it's nice to kind of see it done in an opening episode, rather than an episode where the Doctor's already kind of established and knows kind of, oh, all right, fine, the has disappeared. I'll deal with it, it's cool. And the final, yes, there's only four good points, the final good point is the outro um, visuals and theme. Now, the reason I use uh, quotes for the outro titles is because I don't know whether these are the final um, visuals, and we can only see them kind of blurrily in the background, so I don't know whether these are the final visuals or they're just stand-ins. But for now, I'm going to count them as the actual things and say that I really, really, really like the kaleidoscope effect. I love it. It's unique, it's different, and it's quite simple, and it's nothing kind of like this big massive wavy tunnel that you kind of start spiralling down in the other series. It's kind of just, oh, it's, oh, yeah, okay, cool, nice, 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 nice. And all the colours and all that kind of stuff just really add to it. So, I like that, and the theme tune is so close to the very original theme, it's unbelievable. It's kind of like a modernised version, and if you got rid of those tinny sounding drums, it'd be perfection. So they're the good points. The music, Bradley Walsh, and there being no TARDIS. The bad points, it comes down to everything else. The story was your generic, something's happening on Earth, there's an alien that's appeared, and the Doctor's got to figure out who it is. And you're probably thinking, well, that's just every Doctor Who story ever, and it's every new Who Doctor Who story ever. But the whole thing was a little bit predictable. I mean, you kind of got up to the point with the big spirally alien and was like, ooh, okay, cool. And then you had the big teeth alien appear and go, ooh. And the doctor's kind of like, oh, it's a war between the two. And then it's, no, it's actually a hunt. This person, this, this teethy alien is hunting for just a random human. And then this spiral thing is his, his way of cheating that because he has to do it with no weapons or no information or anything like that. It's his way of his cheating it so we can find him, take him back and become a leader. So, there was a bit of a change in the middle, but it, the story itself was boring and bland and there wasn't really much to it. So, yeah. Story-wise for the monster, it wasn't great. The whole companion mini-stories... <sighs> the fact that you don't have a Doctor Who intro theme in your... in the beginning of your episode, which, by the way, you could have just used Peter Capaldi's and put in Jodie Whittaker's eyes and I'd have accepted that as an introduction title so you don't reveal anything the new one till episode two and then you kind of think I wouldn't have minded that because watching the episode with kind of like Ryan and the bike and his and his um, his grandmother and his grand and his new grandfather and kind of the thing with Yasmin and all that kind of stuff everything feels like an episode of Broadchurch it feels like you're watching a a soap opera. It feels like you're watching a story that isn't actually Doctor Who. It's not science fiction. It's just kind of plodding along. It's nice to see these bits of story kind of tie in together. That's okay, but in Doctor, but in the Doctor Who format, it didn't feel like an episode of Doctor Who. Even when the big purple, purple, blue turnip turned up, it was still kind of a oh, okay. This could still be anything else in the world. It felt a little bit, mm, okay. As, so as a normal kind of family story taking the Doctor out of it and the aliens out of it, it's nice. But as a Doctor Who story, it's terrible. It's, it's just, no. Moving on, I'm going to do a Jolly Whittaker last. So I'm going to start off with the acting. And I have to say that the acting from Toes and Cole and uh, Mandip, Someone, I can't remember your last name, I do apologise, wasn't great. The interaction with um, Tozin and his grandmother and, and the, with the grandmother and the grandfather, that was fine. 
because the other two kind of carried it. But the interaction between Tozin and Mandip, you can see that, one, they've never taken on anything of this sort of spectacle before, and two, I just get the feeling when watching them that there's no confidence in themselves, there's no kind of real kind of, yes, we know these characters and we're going to kind of get into it. It just felt a bit kind of, we've got no real clue what we're doing. So the acting on that side of things was not particularly great. And the characters had no real development over the thing. They were just the same boring, bland characters. Whereas Tozen's character, Ryan, his grandmother and his grandfather actually had character progression through the episode, which was nice to see. So the things so far that I don't like are uh, the writing, it doesn't feel like a Doctor Who episode, and that's a massive problem when it's a brand new opener for a Doctor Who episode, and the acting, it's not exactly the strongest in the world, and again, for a brand new episode of Doctor Who and a brand new series, you have to be on point, because you need to draw your people in, and so far they haven't. Which means all the hope rests on Jodie Whittaker, and because I haven't put Jodie Whittaker in the good, you can already tell that it wasn't great. Now, I understand that it's a post-regeneration. Fine, fair enough. I understand that we haven't really seen much of Jodie Whittaker as a doctor outside of her first episode. So I am waiting to kind of judge her a little bit more deeply, kind of maybe when we get to episode three or four. So look forward to that. Every doctor has had that little, little bit of wonderment and wonderfulness that's just kind of been brought into the post-regenerative episode and Jodie Whittaker doesn't feel like that because she basically feels like a mix of Matt Smith and David Tennant and that doesn't work. It's too over the top, it's too backward and it's too kind of... it's just a mishmash of just... it's it's basically trying to take rectangles and triangles and put them through a circle hole that is far too small. It doesn't work. It's trying to mash things together that... Eh, don't really fit together. So, yeah. Although it's her first episode, it's not great. But, that being said, I am waiting to kind of leave more judgement until the next time that we see her, because she hasn't really kind of had much to do. So, on reflection. The good, there are good points. So on, on reflection, the the music was good, the titles were good, and Bradley Walsh was good. But the bad was everything else. The characters, the acting, the new Doctor, everything just felt lacking. And it feels like it's not an episode of Doctor Who. It feels like there's a... You know how on a bridge... You've got there's that there's two keystones that are in the bridge. You've kind of got it's kind of like in when you've got an arch bridge, you've got two keystones, and if those keystones fall out, the bridge collapses. The new series is missing those keystones so far, and although it's kind of like, but it's episode one, give it a chance. It's episode one, and it needs to draw you in straight away, and it doesn't for me. That being said, I am still gonna kind of watch the episode and the series and see if it can. I can better itself because just because it started off crummy doesn't mean it's going to end crummy. So there you go. So they're my thoughts and feelings. As a first episode of series eleven, it's not great. It's lacking. It's a bit thingy. It feels like it's not a science fiction program. It feels like it's a generic family show. And if you still think that Jodie Whittaker is your favourite Doctor and her series is your favourite series and her first episode is your favourite episode, fantastic! Again, we're all allowed opinions. Just because I'm saying that the, se the episode and the Doctor weren't great so far doesn't make me any less of a Doctor Who fan. And I'm gonna go on to a point about that in a minute because I got really annoyed the other day by something I saw on Facebook. <sighs> story of every teenager's life, eh? So, yeah, as a story, it's not great, but if you enjoyed it, absolutely fantastic, and if you've got any thoughts and feelings that you kind of want to share with me, leave them down in the comment section below. I'm always up for a discussion about these episodes and kind of talking about them, and if you can change my mind and say, this is what's fantastic about the episode, then brilliant, go for it. Hey guys, um, I do apologise, the last bit of this is actually in audio form, uh, my camera died. Uh, in the last kind of couple of minutes of the review. Basically, all I was saying was that 
on Facebook um, a couple of days ago, I saw a post where someone was basically saying that there's enough of the negative uh, reviews of Jodie Whittaker in the episode, and that if you didn't like the new episode, you weren't a proper Doctor Who fan, and that you should leave the group. And no, that's not acceptable. As fans, we're all allowed our own opinions, and if that means in a Doctor Who group that are negative comments, then there's going to be negative comments. You can't tell people to leave just because you don't want to see the negative comments. You're just going to have to move past them and get forward. So that was all that was kind of kind of in the end of the episode. So it was kind of a somber point. So I've shortened it down to about 20 seconds here. Uh, rather than two minutes is what it was in the video. So again, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, and look out for the review of episode two next week, uh, next Friday, uh, where I shall hopefully have changed some of my opinions, which would be nice. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have anything that you want to kind of discuss, or you have any comments or you have any opinions, put them down in the comment section below. And yeah, so see you later.